There's some in the room that have a need in their body this morning. Maybe they're watching online this morning. And I want you to dig in. Don't just sing these words because they're on the screen. I want you to begin to prophesy, come alive in the name of Jesus. Let's believe for the dead in this city to be raised this morning. Just because of people were obedient to lift their voice and with power on the inside proclaim it.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. This is a house of miracles. God, we receive your vision for our life today. Mm. We bless your name. Jesus, our healer. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for that miracle presence that is in this place. We thank you for that electricity that is flowing through hands even now. And Lord, we ask that you would multiply, multiply, multiply that miracle working ability, that power of the Holy Spirit that is upon each and every one of us for signs and wonders in your name. How many of you feel that electricity in your hands right now? When Pastor Jeff began to sing that house of miracles, I just started to just feel, just feel such, a, 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 such a power beginning to flow through hands. One, just everybody go ahead and just stick your hands up and just begin to invite the Lord just to begin to allow his power to begin to flow freely. Come on, I just see it like plugging in, just like plugging in right now to that power source, the source of all power, the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for Christ in us, the hope of glory. But Father, we thank you for a Christ through us today. Lord, the anointed one and his anointing. There it is. There it is. Even some of you who may not have felt it before, even now, just as you're beginning to step out by faith and beginning to just to reach into that atmosphere, that electricity is beginning to flow through your hands. And he doesn't just manifest his power just to make us feel good but it's so that we would do good and heal all who are oppressed because God is with us and so why don't you take a moment right now and just begin to bless one another with his power in this place of his presence and let's make room for his miracles to flow freely here today thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. the ministry of miracles. Mm. We thank you for the gifts of healing, the gift of faith that work in miracles right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, how many of you, as you begin to pray for someone else, you begin to feel that power flow from you to them? Amen. How many of you, as you receive prayer, you begin to feel that virtue begin to flow into you? Habakkuk 3, 4 says he's hidden power in your hands. Isn't that amazing? That the God of all power put his power in your hands. In fact, when God told Moses to deliver a nation, he said, what's in your hand? He just had a common staff, a shepherd's staff. And he said, throw it down, and it became a serpent. And he said, pick it back up. He said, oh, I don't know, Lord. And when he picked it back up, it became a staff again in his hand. Then he told him to put his hand in his, in his bosom, and he pulled it out of his leper. He said, put it back in. It became just like new skin. And sign after sign, God manifested power to deliver a nation through one man's hand. And it said in Exodus 4.21, he said, all of these signs I have already put in your hand. I wonder what's in your hand. I wonder what he's already put in your hand for somebody else. 
to not just heal, but also to deliver a nation. We're going to talk about it today, how Peter and John, when they came up against political persecution, they said, Lord, stretch forth your hand to heal. That signs and wonders would be done in your name. And then it said, the place where they were assembled was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. And see, when the hand of God comes on you, you can't help but extend it to others. God, we just want to say thank you for your hand. Thank you for the good hand of the Lord, just like Nehemiah said, the good hand of God is upon me. The hand of his favor, his anointing, his power, his endorsement, his affirmation, it is upon me. And there is a great work before me. God, we thank you for the great and greater works that you have called us to walk in in this season. Not by our might, nor by our power, but by the hand of your spirit that is upon us. Let's just take a moment just to acknowledge the hand of God. Hmm. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus. Oh, we love you. We love you. God, I thank you, Lord, that you said that men every word see our good works and therefore give glory to our Father who is in heaven. God, I thank you for those good works, those great works, Lord, that are predestined for us because the good hand of God is upon us. Why don't you just declare over yourself, the good hand of God is upon me. The good hand of God is upon me. The good hand of God is upon me. And he has a great work for me. I bless the good hand of God upon you. And I give thanks for the great work that he has set before you. Jesus, you're amazing. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for that tangible presence, Lord, that thick cloud that is upon us today. God, we welcome your glory. We welcome that kabod of God, that weighty glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. You know, God said he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. He's always with us. He is God with us. That's one of the names of God. But then there's times when he's a little bit more with us. To where he's not just walking with us, but there's something of an atmosphere that begins to rest on us. How many of you have even felt just the, the thickening up of the atmosphere in the air around you this morning? One of the things that I've learned in my Christian life is whatever I can acknowledge, become aware of, and be thankful for, it'll increase. And I've also recognized at times when things, when the Lord begins to manifest and maybe I haven't had the same wonder, the awe, the appreciation, the gratitude, the, the wow, God, you're amazing. It's not that he decreases or diminishes. I just become less aware of the God with us. And so Lord, we just wanna say, Lord, that we are aware that you are with us. God, we thank you, Lord, even for what we feel in this atmosphere right now. Mm. You know, we've received just some incredible testimonies from last Sunday, but God doesn't limit healing to one Sunday. 
whenever the healer shows up, there's healing to happen and miracles he desires to do. And if you're here this morning, you need a touch of God in your body. I just want you to stand up. It said in Luke chapter five, verse 17, that the power of the Lord was present to heal. And I'm thankful for the gift of faith. I'm thankful when you don't have a word of knowledge, you can pray the prayer of faith and it'll save the sick. I'm thankful for gifts of healing to where a certain person can have a certain grace to heal a certain condition. I'm thankful for the gift of the working of miracles. But when the giver of gifts steps into the room, you don't need a gift. You just begin to partner with that miracle atmosphere that is present. And I want you right now, just in this atmosphere, to begin to do something you couldn't do before. Don't look for your pain, look for your healing. Be healed in Jesus' name. 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 Be healed, healed, full healing, full measure. Not 80, not 90, not 95%, 100%. Be healed and be made whole in the name of Jesus. Every sign and symptom of sickness leaves your body now. Right now, every spirit of infirmity goes now. Right now, every trace of demonic disease leaves your life now. In Jesus' name. And just begin to take that healing for a test drive. Jesus told the man with a withered hand, stretch out your hand. He told the lame man at the pool of Bethesda, take up your mat and walk. Peter and John took that lame man at the gate, beautiful, and they grabbed him by the right hand and they said, get up. When Peter was bound in prison, he didn't need a healing, he needed a deliverance. And when that angel touched him, he said, get up. And all of a sudden he got up and the shackles fell. And as he began to walk forward, the gates began to open to him. And so right now I command every shackle of every season to leave your life. And I speak right now to your body for the anointing of the Holy Spirit from the top of your head to the tips of your toes to do what only God can do. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that healing has been purchased in the atonement. Lord, that it's not something that we will get. It's something that we already have. That by your stripes, we were healed. And right now, by faith, we just step into that finished work. We step into the healing and the wholeness, the freedom that your blood purchased for us. We thank you, Lord, that sickness was placed on you, that it would never have to be placed on us. Lord, in that place where there's been tormenting thoughts, God, I thank you, Lord, that you took on a crown of thorns, that we could be crowned with glory. Hmm. And right now, if you recognize that the the pain has left your body, you have mobility where you're immobile, that those signs and symptoms of sickness have, have left, I want you just to begin to start waving both hands just to give praise to the Lord right now across the room. Praise the Lord. 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 Just begin to shout out what, what, what left, what, what, what happened, what happened? You're back. So what was the pain like? compressed vertebrae. Well, now it's gone and never come back again in the name of Jesus. We close that back door. What about you, Madeline? What happened with you? Hurt to turn your neck? Hallelujah. Come on, shake it. Hallelujah. Who else? I saw, yes. Yeah, what happened? You had pain in your hands. How long, how long had you had pain? Worse and worse for three years, but today the tide turned, amen? Because he brought healing to your hands that he bring healing through your hands, amen? Who else? Right over here, ma'am. Yeah, what happened with you? 
Come on, you're back, hallelujah. I felt it when you said it. Come on, some of y'all got healed with her testimony right there. Listen, did you feel the anointing on when she said that? See, the testimony, of, look, Sarah stood up, listen, in her, in her uh, hallelujah, Kingsway, stay warm prayer blanket. She got us, only Sarah Pemberton brings a Snuggie to church. <laughs> hallelujah. How long, how, how long have you had pain in your back? Where was it? Mm. You're in the emergency room on Friday morning, couldn't move. I'm proud of you. She was in the emergency room on Friday, couldn't move. The Lord said, press through today. Hallelujah. I, it always amazes me when people have, you know, the headaches so they can't make it to the healing service. Hallelujah, you know. So I honor your faith. Come on, just like Jesus told that one of the issues, but he said, your faith has made you well. And we declare never again will you have to deal with that debilitating pain in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Who else? Just I saw some hands over here. Anybody? They felt that pain leave, your, leave you? Anybody else? Yeah, right over here. Yes, ma'am. Hip pain. You been wrestling with God? Hallelujah. I'm kidding. That's Jacob. It's a bad, bad, bad pastor joke. Hallelujah. 15 years of hip pain. Which hip? The left one. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Why don't you just take, 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 a, take a healing test drive. Go for, a, go for a run, hallelujah. Come on, loosen that thing up, hallelujah. Come on. It's, it's kind of like when you, when you have a squeaky door, squeak, squeaky door, you put oil on the hinges, but then you begin to work that thing, see? And one of the things about the working of miracles I've learned over time is when the anointing shows up, you, you be, that's what I call the working of miracles. And so a lot of times when you begin to partner with that anointing, some, it's like I'm so thankful when it just leaves, but sometimes you got to begin to partner with the working, the operation of miracles. Anyone else have something just either a, a healing that manifested or something that left your life? Come on, let's thank the Lord for all of these wonderful testimonies. Can we do that? Some of the testimonies that came in even from last Sunday, Susan Jennings was watching online from Iowa. She had blurred vision. And all of a sudden began to start being able to see and see it clearly. She had issues with mobility in her shoulders. And as the Holy Spirit began to move freely through her, she began to move her shoulders without issue. Isn't that amazing? Let's give the Lord a praise for that. Our friend David Henderson was watching online and sent Roy a text. He said, man, Jesus met me right where I was. I felt his touch on my right temple in my head and all the damage from an electrical accident when I was 21 has passed. I can actually remember things now. No more short-term memory loss. Can we give God praise for that? <laughs> David, you're here. Come on. That's awesome, man. Psalm 103, forget not all his benefits. Amen. Man, so 21 years, man, that's been a while, huh? Praise God, you got your memory back. Amen? That's so beautiful. I was in, uh, ministering in Boise, Idaho one time, and I was sharing a testimony of a lady named Beverly. And Beverly, I was, I was ministering in Charlotte, and the Lord told me that if I would snap my fingers and, and declare the healing of minds and memories, that synapses would begin to start firing again. How many of that sometimes God will use to play on words? He said, if I snap, the synapses will begin to start firing. Karen, you were in that meeting. You, you remember Beverly. And so Beverly had gone through electrical shock therapy many, many years ago. Now, not only that, not only has she lost over short-term memory, but she also um, was in line to get a hip replacement and a shoulder replacement. So she had a lot of stuff going on. And so what's amazing was when I snapped my fingers, all of a sudden she felt what she, she testified to what feeling like a spark in her brain, in her head. And all of a sudden her memory was turned back on. She had retention. Her husband testified, testified of how it was and then was able to testify of how, how, how it was then currently because they actually waited until the next day to give testimony. Uh, and, and, and as she was coming up to give the testimony, she took the first step, lifted up her right leg. And when she did, all of a sudden her hip popped and she got a brand new hip. She, listen, she got so excited about her mind and her hip getting healed. She forgot about her bad shoulder. And she said, Jesus, when she said, Jesus, your shoulder. And it was one of those things she, re, she remembered halfway through the motion that she couldn't do what she was about to do. And she, I mean, the, the look of surprise on her face because she knew that God had healed her mind, but it was in coming to give a testimony that he healed her hip. And then it was going to the next level of doing something that she would have never done if she had thought about it. See, sometimes what keeps you from your healing is you think about what you can't do. 
instead of recognizing that with God, all things are possible. Amen. I was given that testimony up in Boise, Idaho. Uh, in fact, it was in Nampa, and uh, right outside of Boise. And uh, there was a lady there named Nancy, and she had a husband named Joe. And Joe had actually uh, lost his memory. I think it was seven years earlier. He worked in a chemical plant. Uh, it was, it had to do with like fertilizer and uh, grass and, and stuff like that. And so anyway, the chemicals had created a, a, um, a degeneration in his mind, just where the chemicals began to affect his mind, and to where he was pretty much an invalid. I mean, he had to kind of be led around, you know, couldn't remember anything about anyone. And so she heard this testimony, brought him to the meeting with some assistance the next night. I prayed for him, and he came up and testified. You could see when I prayed for him, the power of God hit him. And when the power of God hit him, it was like all of a sudden, like his eyes got turned on. And when his eyes got turned on, I said, did you feel that, Joe? I felt that. Did you feel it? He goes, yeah. And so I started to ask him questions. I said, Nancy, what's something that, that you know that he would not know because of this condition? She said, well, ask him what street he lives on. I asked him. He knew right away. And she said, well, she goes, well, she goes, it's really been more like the, you know, the last seven years of like that. She's like, you know, just asking. So I started asking him his birthday, and I started asking him, you know, what city we're in. I started asking him what he did for work, what the names of his children were. He started doing that. I said, well, Joe, you got any pets? And it gives the name of a cat. And she goes, oh, the cat died five years ago. Here's what's amazing was his mind was restored to before the injury. And for him, it was like the seven years that were lost were given back in one second. Wow. And she's like, well, Joe, actually, the cat passed, you know. <laughs> so, but I was like, this is awesome because he didn't just get his now memory back, but he was brought back into his right mind. And see, and sometimes we can make excuses for things that we deal with in our mind and in our body and in life just saying, well, when you get old, this happens. Or when this, you know, da, 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 da. How many of Moses lived under a lesser covenant with a lesser glory? He was 120. His eyesight was not diminished. That means that we should not have to have glasses. There's no condemnation for those who do. But pray for your eyes. Jesus said, bless your eyes for they see, not just in the spirit, but also in the natural. Amen. God wants to give everybody 2020. Amen. He, he, he said that his, his natural eyes were not diminished, nor his natural vigor. Come on, gentlemen. Hallelujah. So what is natural vigor? That means you don't need the blue pill. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Come on. Yeah, yeah, amen. Amen. 120, 120. He didn't allow, allow life to speak louder than truth. And Psalm 103, it says that God heals all of our diseases. He forgives all of our iniquities. But he also said for us to forget not all of his benefits. And that's always been the scripture the Lord gave me when it came to praying for people with either, uh, either memory issues or even mind issues that have somehow damaged the brain or created an inability to retain information. Jesus said in John 14, 26, the helper, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance that I've said to you. And there is an anointing to quicken your mind. If you're here this morning and you say, listen, I need a touch in my mind, stand up. Mm-hmm. I know, she, yeah, she ain't, she ain't about to sow a seed on that one, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for sound minds. I thank you for a quickening anointing of the Holy Spirit. Just put your hands on your head, hallelujah. Father, I thank you, hallelujah. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Forget, no, they, oh, 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 oh. Some of y'all getting slain in the Spirit with just put your own hands on you. Father, I thank you right now Lord, that we've not been given a spirit of fear, timidity, or insecurity, but power, love, and a sound mind. I bless your mind to be sound. I bless your memory to be quick. And I bless you to have an even... A, a greater ability by the Spirit than you've ever had in the natural for learning, for retaining, and for understanding. I bless you with the spirit of understanding right now. Understanding is a ministry of the Holy Spirit we see in Isaiah chapter 11. And so, Father, I thank you for minds that are sharp and quick in the name of Jesus. And, Father, right now, I curse brain fog. I curse that brain fog right now in the name of Jesus. I command anyone and everyone who has experienced that brain fog or the interruption of thought right now to come out from under that demonic cap in the name of Jesus. And I even break the power of stinking thinking. Hallelujah. Lord, I just thank you for the helmet of hope right now being placed upon every head in the name of Jesus. Even some minds have almost been held captive by a worst case scenario and vain imagination. And I just speak to you right now that you're coming out from under that chicken little spirit and you're stepping into a place of with God, all things are possible. That how you see 
see, what you see will be different from this day forward in the name of Jesus. Mm. Man, there's such an electricity moving in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you feel that electricity moving on your, on your head right now? Mm. Lord, I thank you for the reversing, the reversing of every mental condition that has created any type of issue and the chemical balance in our life right now. I bless right now synapses to fire. I bless even serotonin levels to come into where they're called to be. Ooh, ooh, ooh the Lord right now is touching hormones, 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 specifically in women right now. They're, Lord, I thank you for mi hormonal miracles right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, right now. Some of you even had issues of irregularity that was connected to a hormone imbalance. And I speak to you right now by the power of God, the spirit of God, God, that right now that what has been out of balance is coming into balance, that what has been out of order is coming into order right now in the name of Jesus. I bless your physical body to function in the fullness of how God has wonderfully and perfectly designed you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How many of you feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit even on your mind when we begin to pray? That, I'm telling you. That thing, oh, hallelujah, there's a regenerative, it's a regenerative work of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Wow, thank you, Lord. And Lord, I bless your power to only increase. I thank you, Lord, that you've called us to live a faith-to-faith, -faith, glory to glory life. Thank you, Lord, for an ever-increasing, ever-increasing encounter with the splendor and the majesty of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Man, there is so much electricity here right now. How many of y'all, whose hands are still vibrating? Man, I like that. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. You know, our message for next Sunday is what's in your hand, but it feels like it's getting delivered today. Hallelujah. What's in your hand? Come on, what's in your heart? What's in your mouth and what's in your house? You understand those four things and you can change a country. One man, God said, what's in your hand? And he, when he began to use what he had, an entire nation was set free from 400 years of bondage. And I want to tell you, we're coming out of a 400-year cycle season as a nation to step into the fullness of the freedom that God has called us to walk in as a people. And it's going to be because somebody's going to recognize what's in their hand. The word of faith is near you. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. And you, only, you may only have a little oil in your house, but that's all that widow needed to turn everything around. I bless your little to become much in this season. I bless the seed of faith, the seed of hope, the seeds of joy and peace that God has placed within you to produce like gangbusters. I just see wildflowers beginning to bloom out of the seeds of joy and hope and peace. It's like like uncontained, like you're coming into a season of, of uncontainable growth. Uncontainable growth. Exponential increase to the left, to the right, before you, behind you. Not just growing in the pot to where you've been planted, but I speak to you right now that every limitation in your life is being removed by God. And the prayer of Jabez is about to come to pass in your life to begin to stretch out, to begin to extend, to begin to enlarge your borders for the kingdom of God to increase. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Jesus is awesome. Jesus is awesome. Mac Denson texted me this week. He said, I had no pain in my left leg today after cutting the grass. Doctor said after the MRI on my lower back, it did not look good. And it was causing pain in my leg the last two, three months. Every time I would try to cut grass, my leg would hurt for hours. But I cut grass today and have no pain. Praise God. Come on. Jana Moore had had an, a, just, a, a, just an unbelievable stabbing pain in her left shoulder and this issue around her midsection uh, since Zachary's birth to where it would limit her ability to hold him for extended periods of time. And any time she did, there'd be tremendous pain. I know that children are a word from the Lord and there should be no pain with a promise. Amen. 
And, and, and Tina kept saying, we got to pray for Jen. I was like, well, where is she? You know, she was here, then she's there. Hello. And so when I went over, I got to pray for her. And, began, and I understand this pain. When I prayed for her, all of a sudden that pain left her right away. And she texted uh, Tina later that day and texted me later on. She said, not only did the pain leave them, but it's not come back. I'm able to hold my son without pain. Isn't that awesome? And Jesus is awesome. Amen. In fact, we have a podcast coming out Monday night, I think at 8 p.m. it's going to air. Um, I pre-recorded a bunch of prophetic words this past week that we'll be releasing. Uh, how many of you have been enjoying those prophetic word podcasts? You know, that. listen, the nations are really opening up to these. Honestly, we're seeing, you know, our, our just really when you even look at the analytics, it's, it, it, it can be very limited. You can see like 14,000 views on a video, and four, it's only 14 people in Birmingham. I'm like, well, hallelujah. But the nations are coming alive with a lot of these words and the testimonies that were coming, are coming in. And so I have one coming out on Monday where I talk about uh, a prophetic word for fathers and families in the month of July. July, but I also minister specifically to people who have had an attack in their back or somewhere on their backside. And in fact, Jason James had texted me the other day about just a, a pain that he was having. He said, man, I don't know what to do. They're talking about surgery. I said, watch this video. I said, I'm going to send you the Dropbox link. He and Desiree sat down to watch it, which come on, let's thank the Lord for their engagement. Come on. Hallelujah. And he said, man, when I was watching that, that pain where they were saying that I had no other option than surgery left my body completely. Amen? Come on. And I want to tell you, the anointing is tangible, it's transferable. Those of you watching online, just like David and Susan last week, you can receive healing right there where you're at. Amen? Come on. We don't tolerate sickness, but we celebrate healing in this house. Amen? By the way, is anybody with us for the very first time today? Just go ahead and raise your hand if this is your first time at Kingsway. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Where are you all visiting from? Awesome. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. What about you guys? Cahaba Heights. Awesome. Anyone else here for the first time? So we've got our neighbors here today. We had some other states here last week. I know we had folks drive all the way down from Washington State for the meeting and Mississippi and just different places. And it's always so great to hear, you know, whether somebody drove 15 minutes or flew 15 hours. Amen. We had a guy one time show up in the parking lot and one of the parking lot, one of our incredible, how many of you love the parking lot guys? Come on. Hallelujah. Some of y'all are called to those golf carts. We'll be talking about that on July 17th. But uh, it's an incredible opportunity to prophesy over people, to heal people, and just to love people. Amen? You know, there's something about personal encounter that brings people into a supernatural experience. Because you are a gate that opens up to them. But he, he jumped on the cart and, and, and picked this guy up. And the guy's like, good day, mate. He goes, whoa, you're not from here, are you? He said, man, he goes, I saw a service from two. Sorry, I lost my Australian accent. I, I, I saw a service from two weeks ago. And saw how God was moving at y'all's church. I just had to jump on a plane and get here. Now, if you've ever flown to Australia, and I've, I've, I've flown a lot overseas, and I'll tell you, listen, you plan six months out, that's three grand. I couldn't imagine what a plane ticket overseas would cost with less than a two-week notice. I mean, you know, that's a sacrifice. That's a commitment. And man, did God meet him where he was at. And I want to tell you, listen, we have something so special and so precious in this place. Amen. Yes, it's connected to who we are because every one of you is a different, incredible, special piece of the puzzle that he's putting together. But there is also a sovereign blessing of the Lord upon this vision, this mission, this house, and God's dream for you. Amen. Can we just thank the Lord for just this, the special treasure we all are to him and that we have in this place? You know, uh, the Bishop Parker, Reverend Sam, was praying uh, during, during service earlier. And he just began to start just praying just for that increased appreciation for the opportunity that we all have. And really, as a Christian, we should wake up so excited every day. I mean, we have the, we have the, we have the greatest life that anybody could have, right? And, it, and life isn't measured by what happens to you. It's always measured by how you respond, right? A man has joy by what? The answer of his mouth. And as a Christian, we're like Stephen Curtis Chapman 24-7. This is the great adventure. Because, listen, you never know what miracles each day holds. But we know who holds each day, and he has more than enough miracles to give away. Amen? I do want to let you know just about some things that are coming up so that you can plan for them. Today we're going to be talking about great power, great grace, and no lack. Hallelujah. How many, how many of you say, I could use some more power, I'd love some more grace, and I don't want any lack? Amen. We're going to talk about how, how really those were a threefold cord in the first century church and how God is rebirthing that again. Uh, and, 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 and then also next Sunday, say next Sunday, we're going to talk about what's in your hand. 
And we got a little taste test this morning, even as the Lord was asking us and beginning to invite us to, to recognize what's in our hand. But one of the things is we, when we begin to, to recognize who is actually in charge of what's in our hand, that it's not just something that we're doing. These aren't just natural hands on natural arms, but every hand is a supernatural opportunity for somebody to encounter him. That you can put your hand to something that looks common and God can do some, something uncommon. Something that looks ordinary and all of a sudden God does something extraordinary. It was interesting, the greatest anointing on the Apostle Paul was not in his preaching. In fact, he, he taught so long one time that a guy fell out of a window and died. Now, I know I've been long-winded at times, but I don't think we've lost anybody yet, right? The guy's name was Eutychus, hallelujah, and he, he'd raise him for the dead, praise God. But, I mean, he was talking so long, homeboy just fell out of the window and died. And Paul had a tremendous anointing, you know? He authored, of course, two-thirds of the New Testament, but it said the greatest anointing on his life, in Acts chapter 19, verse 12, it said that God worked unusual miracles, Unu unusual miracles, that's, a, that's an interesting category because it makes you wonder, what, what are the usual miracles and then what are the unusual? You know, we, we are a peculiar people, not just us, but, you know, as Christians, it says you're a peculiar people, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood as living stones, amen, being built up together in Christ as a dwelling place for the Lord in the world. But it talked about how the greatest anointing that, that brought extraordinary, uh, an extraordinary anointing and unusual miracles was in the making of tents. And he was simply providing a natural service to somebody. It wasn't when he was in full-time ministry, because how I many know once you get saved, every one of us is in full-time ministry? Amen? Full-time ministry is not you work for a church or that you travel speaking. Full-time ministry is that you were born again you are spirit-filled, and from then on, life is ministry. And see, ministry is simply serving. And one of the things that we recognize, in fact, the Greek word for minister simply means to serve, to wait on, to attend to the needs of others. And when he was serving others vocationally, when he was ministering to natural needs, there was an anointing on him to where they could take his apron, they could take his clothes and simply give those to other people. And if they touched what had touched him in that anointing, not of preaching, but of serving in a practical way that every sickness left, demons left. And I want to tell you, listen, God has miracles for your Monday. God, God has divine encounters for your Tuesday and for your Wednesday. And Ezekiel 47, it says the river flows deeper the farther it gets from the temple. Amen? That means everything that we experience in here on a Sunday, you should experience personally a greater depth on Monday and then on Tuesday. And when we come back on Sunday, it's not to get filled up. It's that all of a sudden there is a rising glory of the Lord from week to week, week to week to all of a sudden the river overflows the banks and everyone steps into the pool of healing. And that was what God has destined for cities in this hour. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about, not just next Sunday, but also July 17th, say July 17th, we're having our gifted to serve night. And uh, this gifted to serve, it's not going to be like a service. It's going to be more of a, like a family meeting. It's going to be more of a coming together. There's going to be opportunity for questions and answers and for us to share our heart with you and to hear your heart and to get everyone plugged into a place where they can flourish and they can prosper, not just in this house, but how many of you recognize that, that, that when we come together in this house, we have an opportunity to grow, but the fruit is seen when we leave. And even as I've been meeting with the mayor and different city council members and other pastors and city officials, I'm just recognizing such an opportunity for our body to come together with other bodies and begin to meet the needs of our city, not just in a natural or practical way, but to step into what looks natural so that God can make it supernatural. And I want to tell you, we are moving into a time where God is rebuilding cities, he is restoring hope. He is reviving his church so that he might awaken the nation. Amen. I was talking to a city councilman this week, and uh, we, were, we were just talking about the city. And he was like, you know what? We give money to everybody. What if we just start giving money to churches? And I said, man, as much as, as, much as I would probably, probably appreciate that, and honestly, as much as we could need that right now, I said, instead of just giving money to the churches or giving grants to the churches, what if instead we designated those funds for city projects 
to where materials and you know could be expenses could be covered, but instead we invite the churches to come together and to serve. So it's not giving money to us, but we're really saying, okay, how can we work together for what God wants to do in the city? He said, you know what? I've talked to every pastor, and you're the only one that said no to the check. He said, you're the only one that said, hey, if we do this, we can all come together and our city can prosper as a result. And I told him, I said, the difference between me and most, I said, I'm not trying to get the salt back in the shaker. We're trying to get the salt to the city. Because Jesus said that we'd be what? Salt to a city and light to the world. And see, God is wanting us to live out loud. He's wanting us to live with an audacious faith to where everywhere we go is blessed because we have been there and we've been blessed to be a blessing. Amen? We do ask practically that everyone who is currently serving in any capacity or wants to become more involved with the life and the ministries of Kingsway Church through serving and through ministering to please be there for this night. Again, this is not just for new interest because how we do what we do, is, is it's all coming into a new place. Amen? And it's important. Has anybody ever showed up late for a meeting and you, and you, and you missed the part that everybody needed to know? And we're at that place right now. And so we do ask you also, if you could be on time, that would be a help to you. We're not, it's not going to be a service. It's not going to be worship or something. There won't be an offering, any of that stuff. This is going to be just a, and it, by the way, we're going to keep it short. Hallelujah. Hour and a half, and that gives time for Q&A. Amen? So 6.30 to 8, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we've been doing better on time. Amen? My message last week was only 35 minutes. Hallelujah. That's why I'm walking around during the transition, so I can say my, meaning, my message stays short. But how many of you have already signed up for that, that serve night? And honestly, this isn't serve teams, it's ministry teams. Because every time that we have an opportunity to serve someone else, we are ministering to them. And it's oftentimes by willing to pick up that common thing that God does something uncommon. And I believe that you're about to come into a season of unusual miracles and extraordinary anointing as you begin to put your heart and your hand to what is in God's heart and what his hand is on in this season. Amen? How many of you have already RSVP'd? How many of you have not RSVP'd, but you keep meaning to? That's, I've, so I've talked to so many, they're like, oh, that's right, I gotta register for that. We do ask you to do that because we're gonna be set up the sanctuary completely different. We're gonna be, we're gonna be doing a lot of things different that night. Instead of having our typical serve teams, the staff is gonna serve you guys. But we do ask that you RSVP so that we can host you guys in the way that we desire to host you. Amen? So if you have your phone, you can take it out and do that, or you can just tell the person sitting next to you, hey, don't let me forget now that my memory has been restored. Amen? <laughs> so people keep telling me, I keep forgetting, but bless God, everybody got healed in your mind, so you ain't got no excuse now, right? All right. I think that's all the announcements. Oh, yeah, the last one. There will not be child care that night because all of our King's Kids teachers will be joining us as well. Amen? All right. Let's pray and jump in the word for today. We'll receive the offering at the end if that's okay with you guys. Mm. God, you're amazing. You're amazing. And I am so thankful for the privilege to be able to see what you have planned for this hour and to be a part of what you're doing. God, Lord, let us never lose sight of how amazing you are, what you've brought each and every one of us out of so that we could bring others into your fullness in this season. God, I just ask even for a greater spirit of thanksgiving and understanding that would bring gratitude to come to each and every one of our hearts. God, we just say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to roam about and figure out and try to navigate in our own strength times and seasons. We thank you, Lord, there's always a voice behind us saying, this is the way. Walk in it. We thank you that you're not just a God in a book, but you're the God of the book who speaks clearly to our hearts. We thank you for that Logos word, that written word, that instruction to us. But, Lord, I thank you for that rhema of when you cause your logos to become alive in us. And so I pray today for each and every person here and for those watching online, Lord, that each and every one of us would hear your word in our own language in a way that we can say yes. 
in a way that we can not only see what you're saying, but we can also know where to stand. In Jesus' name, amen. Man. I just really feel something special today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.